Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video. Today is all about SFML3 and how to link it. That's where we always start. I haven't made a bunch of videos lately, but at least this will get us started with 3.0. I'll be honest, there's not a big difference from what you can do in SFML 2.0, but there's a lot going on in the background and a lot of potential in the new SFML for future improvements. So we'll talk a little bit about what the difference is later, but right now we're just gonna focus on linking it and just know that it's gonna be pretty much the same, but still pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start like we always do. I'm not gonna talk too much. Go ahead and go to the SFML homepage. Either you Google it or you go to sfml-dev.org and hit the download here. So once you're in the download page, you can select the Win32 bit version or the 64 bit version. And this is for the newer version of Visual Studio and the older version. If you're still on the old version, just go ahead and upgrade. It's nice, it doesn't do you any harm. So just go ahead and do that and get the 32 bit version for this video. If you wanna read more on what I'm doing here, you can go to tutorials and hit SFML and as for Visual Studio, which I'm doing here, you might wanna link it for something else, so you can do it from here, but I'm gonna be doing it for Windows and Visual Studio, so I'm gonna click that, and we're pretty much gonna do what they're doing here. And there are only a few differences in how you link this, depending on, or uh, compared to SFML2, so it's not a big difference, and we'll be using this example code here as well, just to try everything out, just to make sure it's working. So once you downloaded it, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to Visual Studio, and in Visual Studio, just create a new project, and you can search for an empty console project. So the tags are C++, Windows, and console. This is the one you wanna grab. I already have it here, so but I'm just gonna click this one. So just create an empty console project, and I'm gonna call this SFML3 link whatever you wanna call it. And make sure this isn't clicked. You can, if you know what you're doing, you can click it. But for me, I like to have my solution and all the project, all the source files and everything in a different folder. So once you've done this, super simple, just hit create. It will create that for you. You'll be greeted by this default. Hopefully looks kind of like this window, just like we always have. And now I'm gonna start off with a few issues that, that people usually have. You know, what they do, is they usually try to just directly start linking here. So if I hit properties, there's gonna be a few things missing here. The CC++ menu here is missing. And that is because we haven't created a source file yet. So the IDE doesn't really know what's going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new file first, and I'm gonna call it main.cpp. You don't have to do anything with this just yet. Just leave it empty. As long as you create a CPP file, now you can start changing some C, C++ functions or uh, options here. So we're gonna be changing this and the linker. The first big difference for SFML3 is that we need to change what language we're using or what version of C++ we're using. And usually it's set to a older standard, the 14 standard, and there are a lot of new ones out now. Um, and the minimum one you need for SFML3 is actually 17. So make sure you downloaded the correct Visual Studio, a new version, you've updated it, so you have all the new standard and everything. If you are still on 19 using some old standards, make sure you upgrade to 22 community. It's, it's free. You can download it from visualstudio.com. Super simple. Just set that up and set up the C++ environment. But for now, since I have it, I'm gonna select 17 for all configurations. This is also something a lot of people make a mistake with. They don't click all configurations here and they don't select Win32. So that's what I'm linking for now. I downloaded the Win32 version. So once you've done this, go ahead and hit apply and then we're gonna go to the linking part of things. And the first thing I'm gonna do is if you don't have your project open yet, you can go ahead and right click the solution and open folder in File Explorer, at least on Windows, and you'll be sent to the file explorer path of your solution. So here is your solution file, and then you have your source codes in this SFML3 link folder. I'm gonna create a new folder where the solution file is and call it external. And then I'm gonna jump over to my SFML 3.0 zip file that I downloaded. So hopefully it should look like this for you. Windows VC 17 32 bit. And inside there will be a SFML 3.0.0 folder. So just click on that one and paste it into the external folder that you just created. So once it's copied, go ahead and open it, and then you'll have a lot of folders in here. I usually delete the doc and the examples folder because they just contain a bunch of, well, examples and documentation. 
So I'm just going to delete that. If you want to check those out, you can go ahead and do it, but I'm not going to do it here. Then the next step is to go into the bin folder and control X or right click, click and cut. So we want to, we don't want to copy these. We just want to cut them out. So cut them and then you'll go back to your solution folder here and go ahead and go into where you created your source file and just paste all the DLLs in here. So these DLL files will be where your source files are. Now, once that's done, I'll go back to the external folder and the SFML folder, and I'll delete this empty bin folder. So you should only have include and lib here. And include contains all the additional library files and all the source files, and the library files are in the lib folder. So these two should be the only ones left. And now we can go ahead actually and start linking. So head on back to your solution. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check up here. So it says debug. You can leave it at release or debug. I'll keep it at debug. And then here, well, this is a lot of people make this mistake is that they leave it at 64. Remember, we're linking for the 32-bit version. If you keep it on 64 here, there will be nothing linked when you run your project. So we need to hit x86 for 32-bit because that's what we're linking for. So you want to run your application in the 32-bit here. So when, whenever you run it, then it will work perfectly. If you keep it at 64, it won't work because there's nothing linked for 64 bit. So go ahead and hit that already. And we'll just double check that before we uh, start the example. Once that's done, right click your project here and go back to properties. Remember, we changed the language version here. We'll stick to the same menu here, CC++, but we'll go into general. And on the top, you'll find additional include directories. So remember, we had the include and the lib. So here is where we link the include directory. So click on the arrow and edit, and you'll be greeted by this empty window. There's actually a row here, and or a, yeah, it's a row, yep. And then you go ahead and click the three dots, and we'll find that folder now. So we kept it in external, SFML, and include. A lot of people make this mistake as well. They go in and click SFML. Don't do that. Just hit include because internally it's linked to well, the include folder, and then it goes into SFML. So don't go ahead and click in there. Just click include and hit select. Once you do that, you'll see the full path here. But what this does is it doesn't really allow us to move our project. Say that I'd move my project to C or D or something like that. It's not going to work. What we want to tell Visual Studio is wherever my solution is, that's where I want it to look for the external folder. So there's a little shorthand for that, which you guys probably know about already is the dollar sign within parentheses solution dir. Make sure to spell this correctly. Solution dir. So what this says is wherever my solution is, if we go back to our solution here, this is our solution file. Wherever this is, from here, you go ahead and start searching for external and SFML. So that's exactly what it's doing. Solution dir, external, SFML, include. Great. So before you leave this screen, just go ahead and copy this whole thing, this whole line and hit OK and hit apply. Make sure you're still in all configurations and Win32. Now we'll go in to a linker. So it's right below CC++. And if you hit linker in general, you'll be greeted by this page where you'll find the additional library directories. So do the same thing here, hit edit. And in the empty row, just paste whatever you had. But change the include to lib. Remember, we have the lib folder as well. So this is where we link the library folder. Hit OK and apply. So all configurations win32. Now we're going to switch it up. Now we're going to link the DLLs, but we're going to do it for debug and release separately. So I'm going to start off with debug. So go ahead and change this to debug. And what I want you to do is go to right below, go to input and find the additional dependencies. Click on the little arrow and hit edit. Don't remove all of this shit right here. Just leave that as it is. Just hit edit and you'll find this empty little text box. And then I'll link these or I'll put them in the description so that you don't have to type these manually. So I'll just, uh, you can just copy them, but I'll put them there. So don't worry about it. But for the debug, remember we switched it to debug, select the ones with the dash D afterwards. It says where it stands for debug. So these are the debug libraries. Hit OK and apply. Now, before the next step, hit release. Okay, hit release, Win32. Do the same thing and find your file or find your 
text and copy paste that right there. So it should look like this without the D afterwards. I'm trying not to laugh while I'm saying the D, but there you go. So release SFML graphics lib, all the libs, hit apply. Boom. There you go. So now if I hit all configurations, it says different options. That means we have different options for debug and release. Now, what is this debug and release? Well, debug basically it runs a bunch of extra stuff in the background when you're running your application. So it's easier to debug. You get a lot of functionality from Visual Studio to help you debug your application while it's running. So that naturally means it runs a little slower. Now release is basically a version where all the debug stuff is stripped off and you're just running your application raw, just like it's supposed to run. And it makes it a bunch faster, but it's nice to have both because we want to uh, work with both. While you're developing, you might want to have debug. And when you're testing the release version, quote unquote, you'll be running release. So you can switch these up here whenever you want. So there you go, hit okay. Everything is linked. We'll keep it in debug. And remember x86, all right, not 64. We linked everything for 32 bit. Let's jump back in here and let's go to the tutorials page in this FML homepage. Go to Visual Studio and find the example code right here. Copy all of this and paste it in your empty main file. And if you don't get any errors here, you're good to go. Perfect. Everything, even the new C++ stuff is working. Now you just hit run. Okay. And it will start building your project. And you might get a bunch of weird stuff here. Don't worry about it. As long as it starts running, you're good to go. And hopefully we, yeah, well, we got a little green circle that we always get when we do these linking videos and perfect. Nothing strange about this, right? So there you go, guys. You have successfully linked SFML3. That's all it took. Main difference was the language version. That's basically it. So go ahead and play around with it. It's not a lot of new things up front. I'd say, like I said before, a lot of things in the background and a lot of potential for the future. You still got your rectangle shapes and everything. You still got everything and your circle shapes. Everything's the same pretty much just that you can use the new C++ functionality as well with pointers and all the new stuff that there is that I don't want to talk about in this video. But uh, if we work on some project with 3.0 here, we'll probably stumble upon some of that too. But there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it linked for you successfully. Remember all the things I said, the common mistakes, it will help you out. If you want a link for another operating system, go ahead and check out the SFML tutorial for it. There are a lot there, really, really good. So you, you shouldn't have any issues with that, but I'm just running it for Windows. So there you go. All right, guys, take it easy. Drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment as well. It really helps out with the algorithm or whatnot. If you want to see more videos, I don't know. I'll make more if, if this stuff is successful. So basically that's how it goes. But there you go. Take it easy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.